Well, I come to stage five, or is it six or no? Ah, well, the snowy place, land of snow and ice, and I have to say this is a great start already. I have to say this is a breath of fresh ice compared to the last level. I keep forgetting how long that guy's range is. <clears throat> Let's just pretend that didn't happen because it'll probably happen again numerous times and I wouldn't want you all to be getting bored now would I? Just leave me alone, freaking furry bear guy. And here we have a sprite swap of that flaming skull pillar thing. And another chest triggered by a risky jump. I probably don't need to point this out, but those uh, ice crap. No, not the ice crap, the ice spikes. Although I guess it could be some kind of creature's crap, but... Ah, uh, who knows. Okay, uh, getting hit there was... Can you please stop being stupid, game? I did not land on that. I've made that same jump literally hundreds of times before now. And that's never happened. And stop interrupting me when I'm trying to explain something. Which in this case was how those bear things... Well, it's kind of like a cross between a bear and a wolf or something. And apparently you can't avoid that thing if you don't do it before he actually fires it, which is just great! Seriously, you really want to have the homing arrows on this stage. Which isn't a luxury I can afford, unfortunately. Hey look, it's a new weapon. Which acts very similar to the powered up axe all things considered, and is just as bad. The gimmicky thing about this weapon is that it comes back afterwards and it doesn't go through things. The other part being that... Um, for some reason it doesn't appear in the earlier levels of the game. So yeah, something I was going to mention is the whole confusion, because I've been, throughout this, these recordings, I've been using stage and level pretty much interchangeably. I mean, the game doesn't actually use one or the other, so I can, uh, you can pretty much use what you want, really, but... The, what I normally do is call uh, the things you go to on the map are levels and the two parts inside that are stages. That's the way I normally call things. Other people might call it world... Uh, have the world first and then call the second the level or a stage, or even a map. But whatever, it really doesn't matter. It probably doesn't matter if I just use them interchangeably. And somehow I managed to not see that. Having said that, they're not usually supposed to appear directly underneath you to begin with. <sighs> what I was saying is um, that this even if it's a, like a, a level stage thing the stages if you want to call them that are 
usually so different in this game that they might as well be different levels to begin with. The only real difference is that you don't get a boss at the end of the first one. Now why is it that first chest always... Uh, no it doesn't actually always have an axe in it, but it seemed like it did for some reason. Well, that tri-blade thing I had before is pretty much the same as an axe, though honestly, I prefer it to the axe. It's just slightly easier to hit things with it, if only because it disappears when it actually hits something, meaning you can fire another one afterwards, instead of having the axe go through things and then you have to wait for it to go off the screen before you can throw another. Uh, yeah, I'm being a bit extra cautious here, but it's mostly because I'm sick of taking hits for stupid reasons. And it's like I say, normally I play this area with the crossbow. Though I don't think it... Uh, the, the first, the oh, normal form of it might be a crossbow, but I'm not sure what the second one is. But the homing arrows really make it easier to hit those things. Alright, less chit-chatting about random junk and keep an eye on the ground where these weird vine things come from. Now, there are treasure chests on those little platforms. Oh wait, that's money. I've got to pick that up. But I don't need to. There's a tr yeah, there's a treasure chest on there, but it's kind of more dangerous than it's worth to actually try and get it. Because of these vine things coming out of the ground. And not being on the ground means that it's a lot harder to hit those things. And yes, we've got this guy again. You know what, I think there's a treasure chest here as well. If I can trigger that before I have to fight Mr. Boo's face here. Where is it? Ah. Well, apparently I can't find it. Great. I wanted to use the gold armor magic attack because that chest would be gold armor if I could trigger it. Looks like I'm going to have to try and take care of this guy the old fashioned way. Now his pattern is always the same except when he does crap like that. He will always sort of make a swoop at you. And I jumped over that. Come on. This game is not freaking Mega Man. When I jump over something, it means I don't get hit by it. As long as I don't touch it. Jumping in Mega Man is so freaking stupid that you can't avoid stuff even if you jump hours beforehand. But that's neither here nor there. Some people like that game and whatever. Anyway, since I died and restarted from the checkpoint, it means I don't have to fight that red armor guy again. But basically, his pattern is... <laughs> that is not low enough to touch! I have jumped there many, many times before and never hit that. What are you doing? Is this some stuff that was taken out of the American version or something? Because this is just stupid. Never had it like what it's been doing now. I'm actually getting a headache from this. Yeah, whatever. Seriously, I'm sticking to my guns on that one. You are not supposed to be able 
to get hit there. I just don't know what's going on. That is what I was trying to get. That second treasure chest. And I forgot about him. This game's always trying to catch me out. I don't know. Maybe I'll get to demonstrate the whole red armor thing in more detail some other time. And yes, there was a wolf there, hidden conveniently off screen for where you'd walk right into him. Or rather, he'd charge right into you. Though honestly, I'd prefer it if I. I actually saw that coming, surprisingly enough. And somehow I didn't get hit there! So surprising. Red armor is just a jerk. And that avalanche was not supposed to be triggered here. And what is with all the weird stuff that's happening in this recording? Seriously. Maybe there is, but I'm not sure if I can actually get it here. Or is it up there? Oh, whatever. Whoa, what? <sighs> Last time I played this, one hit from that weapon killed that thing dead. Seriously, this game is just making stuff up at this point. And yeah, there's a serious screw you moment. If you just jump over here, then that wolf will hit you up there, and there's nothing you can do about it. The only way to survive is to kill him beforehand, because he'll probably knock you down that hole. I just don't understand why this is going so badly. It's never been as hard as this, ever. Not even the first time I played. Apparently someone really doesn't want me to do this LP. And I think I may have missed... There is a treasure chest on that platform. This raised one here, but I think I just missed it. So that had no reason to happen either. But seriously, me getting hit before that was just such BS that frankly I should have to... But I don't feel bad about doing this over again so I can get my armor back and stuff because that's what I deserve to have. I wasn't supposed to get freaking cheated out of it like that. As if I don't know how many t hits it takes to kill one of those things. In all the dozens of times I've played this without any issues. You get lost. Both of you that applies to. If you can get close enough to that guy, you can just stun lock him so that he never gets a chance to attack. Of course, if you miss so much as a single beat on your fire button, then he's going to friggin' get you. Maybe what I'm seeing here in this LP is the true face of Super Ghouls and Ghosts. This is the difficulty that people normally see when they play it. They're always complaining about. Now, where's that treasure chest? I know there's one up. There it is. The screen kind of lock 
blocks after you go past a certain point, as you saw before. And the trigger for the chest is actually beyond that point. <laughs> Press the wrong direction. I'm kind of losing concentration for some reason. Or maybe people distracting me doesn't help. And there's the last avalanche. Those don't actually hurt you, surprisingly enough. They just push you backwards to some predefined point. Said point will usually end up with you going across these spiky things, though, so you'll usually get hit by those. And we're finally up to the boss after another disasterific episode. This guy can be good or bad to deal with. Depends mostly on what he feels like doing. His main attack is to fire those... Well, to throw his spiky hands at you. And those are based on... Where you're standing at the time. And as you can see, he's also got this freezing attack, which for some reason it won't let me break out of. Jeez. Since those claws are kind of, well, like I said, he throws them towards where you're standing at the time. So if he has you kind of backed in a corner, you'll be in serious trouble because there'll be nowhere to run. I actually de defeated him first time. This is must be like a record or something. Well, no, I beat the first boss first time as well, but... And that other one. Okay, just forget I said anything, but that guy can be difficult sometimes, so first time is actually something of an accomplishment. And we're starting to get closer to the end of the game here. We're up to the sort of castle-y tower place, which is what I'll be playing next time, and I've actually got gold armor for once, jeez. This must also be some kind of record. So... I might actually take a break from this now, so maybe I'll be a little different later on. Maybe, maybe not, who knows. You probably will when you see the next video, whenever that is. See you guys.